Well, for more on Trump's State of the Union address, specifically on the way it was delivered rather than what was delivered, I'm joined now in the studio by Berengère Vienno, author of La Langue de Trump, or The Language of Trump in English. Thank you very much for coming on uh, to speak to us today. Thank you. Now, Trump's language is often characterized by quite simplistic language. He often trails off in the middle of, of his sentences. How did this State of the Union address compare to the way we usually hear him speak? This time, it seems that Trump uh, made an effort to follow the lines, the guidelines that he was given. And uh, what I saw is that for the very, uh, from the beginning and at the very beginning of each, what I'd call paragraphs of his speech, he was actually following the line of what was probably written for him. But then if you listen carefully, at the end of each two or three sentences, you could hear that he was becoming himself again you know, saying too bad or sad or things that we usually expect from him now that we know how he speaks. So that was, it was more Trumpian at the end of the sentences than at the beginning. You can see that he, can, he cannot really follow a line from the very beginning to the very end of a very long speech because it was very long for him. Yeah, it, I mean, it was extremely long. We also heard him at, at various points uh, asking Democrats to cast aside revenge, uh, to cast aside resistance and retribution. Um, that does belong to quite a high register. It's almost religious in tone. Yes, indeed. Actually, I think these lines were written by someone else, I'm quite sure. But yes, it was very religious. And uh, all throughout the speech, uh, he mentioned God very many times. And not only God, but also the divine uh, state of America and the Americans. Specifically, he mentioned the um, soldiers during the Second World War who came to save Europe and said that they were dropping from heaven, something like that, to uh, comfort the idea that uh, America America is a divine country and himself is maybe more or less chosen by God. Now, if there's going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be war and investigation. What do you make of Trump using the language of war uh, to describe the numerous judicial probes uh, into his 2016 presidential bid? You know, saying that a country is at war is the best way to unite this country around this president. So actually, if there is a war, it's a war between uh, the uh, judicial and Trump because of this investigation for uh, suspicions of Russian collusion during the campaign. But then by saying that there is a war, Trump assures that the Americans will gather around him to fight a common enemy. So the obvious for him common enemy is um, the, prob well, the Mexicans coming or all the Latin Americans coming up from the south at the southern borders. But also he kind of mixes up this enemy with this enemy which are more personal. That is because he feels endangered. He wants the whole country to feel endangered and to gather around him in order to uh, assure that he will be safe. That's what I hear. And with that kind of higher register than we perhaps hear him use most of the mm -hmm. time, who do you think that's aimed at? Is that aimed at his base or is he trying to target a wider audience, the media, for example? Maybe the media, you're right, but also I think... You know, lately he's been uh, in difficulty because of the end of the shutdown. He had to compromise, which is for the first time, I think, in his, admi in his administration, he had to compromise. So maybe he, he feels that he has to maybe address also another kind of population, not only simple people with simple words, but maybe a higher register. So he's trying very hard, but not always succeeding, I must say. <laughs> Well, very interesting indeed. Berenger Vieno, author of uh, La Langue de Trump, or The Language of Trump. Thank you very much for coming on to France 24 to speak with us today.